are live. Welcome to True Lies Season 1, Episode 5, Thoughts. This episode is called Unrelated Parents. So, spoilers for every episode so far, including this one and the movie that the show is based on. So, great opening mission, and I love that the thing that, you know, Dana keeps sending texts. And, er, wait, yeah, first she's calling, and then she's sending a lot of texts. And it's like 911, and th what was it, three exclamation points. You know, and it turns out it's a, it's a ring light, you know, because she wants to record a TikTok. Which just, it's a, it's a great contrast between the, the, you know, like, in real life, most parents are not, like, saving the world, but, you know, a lot of parents' priorities are a bit more serious and mature than teenagers. And, let's see, yeah, you know, apparently she wants to become a, a singer. And, you know, the, the, uh, what was it, the, um, yeah, Harry said, you know, I thought you wanted to be a marine biologist, you know, that was like last year or something. Is that just, did I not get the memo? I, like, so in this and in The Punisher, a teen girl want, I guess in that, was a marine biologist, marine salvage, something like that. I guess that's just a thing that young women are into now. I mean, that's cool. I just hadn't heard until, but two shows within such short amount of time, yeah. And he takes her cell phone because she's posting about how, you know, how much he's being, you know, he's being such a bad dad to her. And let's see, yeah, you know, we get the, the classic parenting debate, uh, you know, the mother, it's not, yeah, some, sometimes it's the other way around, but in this case, the mother wants a point system where, you know, she can, she can do, you know, yeah, things will cost points and she can earn points by doing chores and such. And, you know, Harry, want, Harry believes in tough love. And I, I think they do a really great job of, you know, you can see where both of them is coming from. And it is, you know, yeah, you know, a lot of good teachers, not so, you know, to be clear, a lot of teachers who you might call bad teachers, a lot of them it's because they're being treated so badly. It's not that the person doesn't have it in them to be a good teacher. But yeah, you know, ideally a good teacher, you know, yeah, treats the, the you know, a approaches these problems saying, okay, you know, do they have a chance to do the, the right thing? You know, where tough love is very focused on just punishment. There's not really a lot of, of room for, so, you know, but in Harry's defense, I mean... She she called multiple times and texted nine one one three exclamation points and then you know yeah she doesn't know that he's a spy but as he you know he says you know I we have to make money that's how you know pays the these sales meetings are important they pay for the house and your phone and you know these things and you know at the end of the episode they say that you know it would be better if she you know, made her own money and put her own money towards her dream. And that is a really great way because, you know, at the end of the day, until you start spending your own, until you start making and spending your own money, yeah, it does kind of feel like, well, you know, sometimes my parents buy me everything I ask for and sometimes they say no. So, you know, you can't complete. I, I remember being like a teenager and and being like, well, why why won't they, you know, why can't they buy me the things that I, you know? And then I had to make my own money. It was like, oh right, you know. And and yeah, what what, what did they say she was fifteen? Yeah, that's a, you know, not not like like extremely long hours kind of, but 
you know, it's it's old enough to be responsible for money at the very least, you know. And what did they say it was? Like the the ice Baskin Robbins, and in in which case it's good that she doesn't have a, you know, have have a have a record because Baskin Robbins always finds out. But yeah, I you know, that's not the kind of thing that you know. I actually don't know. Would it be? Full time, I I don't I don't know enough about that kind of, but but you know hopefully it's not full time. That's too soon. But let's see the yeah we we get the you know we we find out that you know the the um the the missiles uh, you know it's it's uh, I forget. Crap. I, yeah, I forget exactly whose missiles they were, but you know, it, it's causing a conflict between Syria and Israel, both of whom are saying it's the other side who did it, and we find out it was a third party. So, you know, it's not a, a false flag by either of them, which would of course be the first thing we we think when you know it. It seems like well, it's got to be one of the sides though, but no. And yeah, they have to research all the hackers, and I like how your first is like, oh, you know, they have like ten or a hundred. No, 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 they have like millions of hackers on on file, and yeah, I I know it's so some sometimes I'm a real mark for these, but I liked when it, you know, let's see, I think it was no, I'm doing it. Let's see, first, yeah, you know. Harry says, I, I know how we how we'll do this. And then Luther is like, Are you thinking what I think you're thinking? And Harry says, I think I think I'm thinking what you're think what you think I'm thinking, or some something like that. Just yeah. And the can opener. And Let's see. Yeah, I I uh, I don't think I ended up writing it down, but I do really like, you know, when Havoc says you can't just destroy my computer, you know, no, he's actually being serious. It's a problem. But the way he's been talking to them up to that point, it does, you know, of you understand why they don't take him seriously. You know, like hypothetically, let's say that immediately that they come in he was like, well, I knew I was going to get caught. If you want me to undo it, you cannot, you know, you can't damage my computer. It's very necessary. It's very important for this kind of, but no, it's actually, you know, yeah, by the time he says, you can't just destroy my computer, he's been a jerk to them for several minutes, and he keeps denying that it was even him, and, you know, just constantly insulting them and such. So, of course, they think that he's just being selfish. You know, it's that it's not actually a big deal. So, I feel like they did a good job. You know, it's it's a hard sell. You you got to really work to convince the audience because these are reasonable people. You know, certainly sometimes the taskers, Luther and Maria and Gib, sometimes they'll make mistakes, but they kind of they try to to be smart about spy stuff, so why are they destroying a computer that might be, well, you know, the, the, um, let's see, there was the thing about tracking, or was it that they just didn't, yeah, there, there was some, I, I, I don't remember it because I have ADHD, but there were, they, they explained it well enough that I accepted it in the moment. And, you know, Harry with Havoc, is acting like it's Dana, you know, like taking the phone away and saying, "What are you gonna do?" and and, and he calls him Biff. <laughs> Just yeah, I know, honey. He said a lot of mean things, and Helen tries to relate to Havoc, and he's like insulting her shoes, and he says he has three million dollars in NFTs now. This episode aired, let's see, March 29th originally. I think that was before, but we do basically, let's see, I'm, I'm, 
not going to try to explain NFT, but I, I heard that basically the market... Ah, crap. I think when it aired, and certainly when it was written and filmed, NFTs were just, you know... You know, a lot of people thought, a lot of people realized they were ridiculous, but it was like, you no, know, you can actually, you know, you can make money on this thing. But since then, like, I think, did they say the market collapsed or something like that? Someone tried to sell an NFT that they had spent a lot of money on. They were expecting to make a profit, but they actually sold it at a massive loss. So... Yeah, that plays somewhat differently now. The, the, yeah. And... <laughs> Give is like, okay, they're coming in with guns. Lot of, lots of guns. I may have to kill him, says Harry. Because, the, you know, I have to, I, and, and he, you know, right before that he says, I've had to take a lot of difficult, I've had to make a lot of difficult decisions in the field. Just... Yeah, let's see, and, <laughs> you know, oh, we, we stay over, maybe at a nice hotel, and it is not a nice hotel, I, I appreciate, I don't know if they actually found a place like that, or they had to make it, but the little neon, like, alligator mouth, opening and closing in the background, that was a nice touch, that kind of tells you... Not the Four Seasons. Not even the Four Seasons that Rudy went to. That's, yeah. I gotta say, by this point, Harry is as snarky with Helen as she is with him, if not more. So, just, like, seriously, the moment that she actually is a Mary Sue on this show, as, you know, I, I will be honest about it, but it has not happened yet. It's just, yeah. I've, it's looking more and more like the people who can't stand her character are just misogynists who are threatened by a confident woman. Like, I'm not going to claim that there are no female characters who are, like, obnoxious and, and so Like, I, I tend to reject the Mary Sue. Like, it's, you know, one of the things that people use it against is, like, characters like Rey in the new, in the Star Wars sequel movies. And I think it was the the cosmonaut Variety Hour, what's his name, Marcus? I think it was the, the host of that who pointed out, like, all of the leads of Star Wars movies. Like, it goes for Luke, it goes for Anakin, they're technically all Mary Sue or Gary Stu, you know. All of them are ridiculously powerful, you know, so just, yeah. The, the, um, let's see, yeah, I, I tend to reject it, but, you know, it is, it's one of the only, the, the, like, a lot of the claims that, that negative reviews of this make are just, like, basically matters of opinion, like, some of them say, oh, the acting's bad, I think the acting's quite good, it's, it's just a matter of opinion, not everybody likes the... I'll, I'll grant that it's kind of sitcom acting, but that's the tone they're going for. Like, if you dislike... It's fine to dislike the tone, but it's it's a consistent tone. Like, that, that would also be... Like, let's say that they suddenly went super dark, but they cer certainly so far they haven't. You know, that would be a, a point of criticism, certainly. But, yeah, you know, it's it's... A lot of the criticisms are also down to, like, I mean, they, they had the budget to work with that they did. You can't really, it doesn't make a lot of sense to say that the, the oh, it's, you know, it looks like of, of the, the kind of show that it is, you know, just, yeah. Let's see, the, but, but yeah, seriously, the moment that I legitimately see something in the show where she's like a Mary Sue, I will call it out, but, like, and I'll grant that at the very start, I feel like there was, like, a period of the show where, like, she got to say harsher things than he did because, you know, he lied to her for 17 years, but, at the, you know, by now, 
they have the the kind of power imbalance has evened out a lot. Yeah, I guess now that she's a member of the team, you know, the like yeah, he has like seniority, but she's a team member. He trusts her with a lot of these secrets now, so yeah, you know, by now it is a very even but I never did feel like she went too far. Let's see. And Havoc lies to Helen and she gets very angry and says, We do not negotiate with terrorists. And now she's the one who wants to be really, you know, <laughs> she's the one who wants to do tough love. And Harry is like, Let's calm down. I did kind of feel like, and, and it is also like, you know, he. You know, we do find out he wasn't lying about his parents being dead. It was just, you know, he he lied about some details. The the, let's see, the thing he lied about was that the the apparently the 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 USB key wasn't actually from his mother. And it certainly, he he lied about being being sad enough to cry in front of her about it. I I realize it's a not nice hotel, but how thin are those doors again? How could Havoc hear that he, like he, even if he didn't know the details, how could he even tell that Harry was talking to their, their teenagers? Like, you know, because the door was, was closed, and then afterwards, like, Harry could hear... I guess because she knocked over the TV, maybe he could hear that, but even... Okay, that that one I'm a little more okay with, with accepting, but, like... Just, y y you know, how, how could he be sure that Harry wasn't talking to some other spy? You know, just... Yeah. And Havoc escapes, which... You know, actually, I guess he was really, you know, he could tell Helen is going to believe him if he says something really emotional, and she's going to get mad if he pretends to cry and then laughs at her, and that's going to mean that he can, you know, do the, the, the massive energy surge and escape from there, and he was smart enough to know that there would be you know, he'd have to deal with the motion sense, motion detector, something like that. And, yeah, you know, the, the, the taskers talk about how difficult it is to raise teenagers. I really appreciate, like, based on some of the reviews, I thought that Dana was going to be, like, an absolute monster to deal with, but she's not, like, she's being at least slightly unreasonable, but you can see where she's coming from. Like, this is not, like, sometimes when you're watching something and it's like, oh, you know, it's about the relationship between parents and their offspring, you gotta be, like, careful, okay, who is this, who was this written by? You know, was this written by someone who's bitter about either the parents or their offspring? Or was it written by someone who's trying to see things from birth, both points of view? And, yeah, this legitimately was written by people who understand that teenagers, you know, yeah, she's she's passionate about this. You know, she thinks that this is going to be her, her future, her big dream, and she feels like her parents aren't supportive of her. And, like, when you're a teenager, like, your parents' support means the world to you, you know. So, just, yeah, really, really appreciate that. And, and... Yeah, you know, it has it has empathy for for both the both Dana and the the parents. I like Luther and Maria talking about Bridget and you know, he really puts his foot in his mouth talking, you know, telling her that she's you know difficult. You know, I th I think he uses did he use the word feisty? Certainly, you know, he, he crossed the line there. And let's see. I, that's a, another thing. Like, I really appreciate. Like, the show has a lot to say about the way, you know, men and women talk to each other and what is, you know, what is okay and what isn't okay. 
Let's see. And that's another thing. Like, the moment that... Like... There is no woman on this show so far that is just being... You know, just getting getting away with being abusive towards others because of course women can be abusive of men it's just that in our current patriarchal society men tend to be able to be more abusive and get away with being abusive more than women so it's very important to correct when men are when we men are abusive you know so but but yeah, it's not letting the the female characters get away with being abusive. The yeah, just a lot of the negative reviews are from misogynists who, no matter what women say or do, there's no right. I like you know Gibbs saying, "You're raising, you're talking about your fictional offspring." Mm -hmm. Do you need therapy? Because I know a guy. And I, you know, the thing with, you know, okay, make sure you miss that I can do. <laughs> you know, she, I mean, she did get some training from, from Nathan. I don't know if they're like ignoring that or it's still like, I mean, there's a difference. You know, she, she got good at firing at a target that was far away under very controlled circumstances. The moment that you're actually in a firefight, it's much, much... I don't speak from experience, but the the I hear that that's much, much harder. And yeah, I really appreciate, you know, until they realize the truth of these mercenaries, they have to fight non-lethally. You know, they don't want to start a war. So that was a really good detail, you know. So, so Harry, instead of, like snapping necks or shooting people he's you know disarming them non and and like knocking them into walls and such i will say i get it i've you know i realize that's how you know if you're if you're shooting a movie and someone has to break down a door like if at all you have the money and time you're going to replace the door with something that's easy to break through. You don't want to ask an actor or stuntman to actually throw their weight into a real door. That's not good for the human body. But the door that Harry busts down to get into the bathroom to see that Havoc did indeed escape is like just... Yeah. Um, there's a... There's a It was very, very obvious that it was made to break, you know, and there was at least one other door, and yeah, he's like slamming, you know, he's he slams one of their head, one of the mercenaries' heads into a wall, and it just gives like nothing, it was just, it was very, very staged, and I don't love it, but, you know, by... By and large, it's still... And, yeah, we learn, you know, Pyramid hired the mercenaries. And that's when they realize, okay, we can actually, you know, use lethal force against these. And they send drones. Exploding drones, which gives me Venom flashbacks. And... Let's see. Yeah, so the Havoc says that he just wanted Syria and Israel to stop fighting, you know, and it is like, that's, that's the thing, like, a lot of teenagers, you know, want to m change the world for the better, but they don't completely have the, the, the the knowledge and and wisdom and experience to enact it in uh you know the, the it's it's extremely important to encourage this this desire but you you know got to make sure to get them to to do things in a way that is realistic you know Let's 
Galaxy, and you know the the Gib and Havoc talk about this this game, and you know, oh yeah, top five hundred, yeah, that's cute. Let me know when you're in top three, and you know he knows Gibbonator, so that's yeah. And they managed to hack the drones. The you know. The, the show does a really good job spending the, the stunt budget well. You know, really, really great car chase in this episode. And the, the part where, you know, there's an explosion, the, the warning shot drone, you know, that that was a real explosion. In, in general, I think every single explosion in this episode was real, not CG. And, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really glad that they, you know... I'm not making any excuses for the the obvious CG fire and explosions of earlier episodes, but certainly here, and I'm hoping from now on, they they really really you know just yeah, and and the yeah you know they managed to to blow up the one of the at least one of the commando cars using the the drones, so that's great and. Gib gave Havoc a job, and he's apologized, <laughs> and, you know, he, he insulted Helen's shoes, and he offered a site to, to where she can buy better ones, <laughs> which is, like, a great, like, I mean, that's technically an apology, that's technically step in the right direction, but he is still, like, he's standing by that the shoes are bad. He's just saying, I'll help you get better ones, which is very teenager apology. Like, just, yeah. <laughs> and Luther seems to be apologizing to Maria, but then he says, oh, I wasn't talking about you. Well, I'll let you know when. Just, yeah. And that, I think, is everything for this episode, but yeah, um, right, I meant to say at the top, another episode I loved, I will, you know, the moment that there's an episode that I don't love, I will let you know, but yeah, so far, really, really great stuff, glad that Dana came a little bit more into it, like, I, we're, this, this was episode five, let's see, they were in, in the pilot. They were in episode one. Were they at all in episode two? That was the... The, um... Yeah, the... the Helen and Harry are both confronted by the exes of their... Oh, cool. Huh. Robert Duncan McNeil. Uh, um, Tom Paris from Star Trek Voyager directed episode two. Very cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I think episode three and four, yeah, so far the kids have barely been in the show. I don't even know, like, I feel like Jake has had almost nothing to do so far. So, but, I mean, presumably eventually he's going to get, there's still, like, let's see, what, set, uh, is that eight episodes? Eight episodes left, so there's still room for for him to... And certainly, you know, Luther and Maria at the very start had almost nothing to do, and they've gotten a little bit more to do now. So, yeah. Um, looking forward to, to next episode. And... I still don't have... A sign off. Let's see. The I can't think of anything good. Um, this is the Omega of the video.